When you open up RMS Express, this is the interface that you'll see. You'll notice that we have 1.2.14.0 is the current version we're running. The box just below that that has my call sign in it is actually a drop down and these are all the current on this particular system. If you wanted to add a new account to it then you'd click on add call sign. Uh, this brings up the RMS Express properties box and we'll explore that in just a second. We're going to leave it on K4REF. First thing we need to look at is files and under files there are two items that are of importance to us. RMS Express setup and preferences. Let's start with RMS Express Setup. If you've never used the system before, this box will automatically pop up the first time. And we're going to work our way down through it to show you what you need to fill in. So the first thing we would want to fill in is the call sign of the operator. In this case it's uh, K4REF, which is my call sign. If you have a tactical call sign, it would be listed as the AUX call number one or number two. Uh, so if you have, again, if you have a tactical call sign, this is where you would log in the call sign. The next thing we're going to look at is entering the grid square. This is the current location of the system that's operating. If you don't know what it is, you can go over into the box where, that calculates it and just fill in the latitude and longitude. Hit calculate and it'll come up with the grid square that you're in. And then just hit accept to actually place it in the box here. If you have a password for your system, this is where you enter the password. Let's go take a look at where that's at in the WinLink system. Open your web browser and type in winlink.org and hit enter. That'll take you to the WinLink homepage. It defaults to the news category. What we're interested in looking at is my account. So click on My Account. The first time you open this, I want you to notice that the steps for everything that we're doing are down here on the left hand side. So in case you forget any of this, you can just walk through as it suggests. When you go to log into your account, under My Account you type in your call sign and your password. But what if this is the first time here and you don't have a password? Come down to the box below this where it says call sign username and type in your call sign. And then just click send my password. The WinLink system will then send a temporary password to you at your winlink.org address. You can use RMS Express using Telenet most likely to log into your account and pick up your temporary password. When you log in you'll come down and it'll tell you that it doesn't have complete information and it wants you to fill everything in. Let's start out by changing our password. Come over here to the left hand side where it says change password. Click on that. You'll come up to password change and what we want to do is go in and type in your new password and then you need to confirm that so that they match and then click change password down here at the bottom. When you do that, you've got your new password to whatever you set it to. Notice it says password change is good. Now that you've got a new password, let's update your account. So after you've logged in, come to this section on my account and you under view you can see what it already has, which is next to nothing. You want to click on edit. When you click on edit, it will open up all of the fill-in boxes for you to give the system all of your information. So you notice it has your uh, license name, in my case it would be K4REF, street address, city, state, county, postal code. Notice all of these with the red markings of the things that you need to fill in. The email address listed here is an email address that the uh, system can use to contact you uh, for any updates or administrative contacts. So make sure you put a good regular email address, not a wing link address, in there. Uh, we want to have your grid square, uh, your phone number, uh, if you have a website, and any comments. Under comments, you could, if you're Aries based uh, or any other groups, uh, you can note that in there. Uh, this next section is what we're interested in, the secure login. When you check this secure login box, 
It tells the system that you want to use the password that you just put in the system and that is lo to log into the system, you want to use that password in RMS Express when you actually use RMS Express to check on your email. So if you click this box, uh, then it's going to require that your password be inserted where we put it in on the setup page. Uh, just a couple other items here. Uh, password recovery, make sure you put a good uh, email address in for that. Uh, the alternate is if you are not going to be using WinLink but you want to forward all of your WinLink email, uh, you can forward it to another email address. Uh, make sure when you're done doing that you, that you uh, delete this. Uh, then you've got a call prefix, call suffix, uh, mass, ma maximum message size, uh, the last couple items. Uh, when you're done, just hit save, and it will save all of the above information. Uh, one last thing that we want to cover real quick is webmail. Uh, to get into the webmail system here, uh, if you're just going to be using it on the web page, click on webmail, and it'll take you in uh, to the webmail section. When you get there, uh, notice that it looks very much like a typical uh, webmail type of account. And you've got inbox, draft, sent items, and spam, and so on and so forth, where you can create uh, mail from here. Uh, the thing I want to show you real quick is settings. Uh, you can go in and set up your settings uh, here. And then when you're done, to go back uh, to the home page, click on Close and Log Out. And that'll take you out of the web interface and back to this page. So let's go back to RMS Express and continue on. So if you have a password, you're going to type it in right here if it's required. The next thing we want to look at is the Winmore registration key. When using Winmore, you have uh, a nag box that come up, comes up, and I'll show you that later. Uh, but if you want to get rid of the nag box and actually make, I think it's a $39 donation to Winmore, you can type in the key here and the nag box won't come up anymore. Uh, for practical purposes, just leave this blank. The next item is display list of pending incoming messages prior to download. This is really handy when you're actually using the system in radio mode and you want to preview which messages you actually want to download. Uh, you wouldn't want to download a huge message uh, unless you had to because it just will take a very long time. Uh, so if you want to uh, sort through the ones you actually want to download, you would check this box. Again, we're going to leave it unchecked. Uh, warn about connections to stations holding messages. Let's go ahead and check that. Disable peer-to-peer. -peer. We don't want to disable that. Uh, this is the path uh, to your propagation program. This defaults to the C drive. Uh, you should have already loaded the ITSH FBC program on your computer and it puts it in this drive. So this defaults to the correct location. If you've placed it anywhere else then you'll have to put the path in here. Uh, the next default for service codes is public. Uh, all of the stations that we're going to contact are public stations. An example of another service code would be MCOM, but we're not authorized to use MCOM stations. So this defaults to public and just leave it like that. Uh, the next thing is recalculate uh, HF path and uh, if it's higher than 25, just leave 25 in as the default. Uh, the next item is keep logs for two weeks. I go ahead and, and run this up as high as it'll go uh, to 52 because I just wanted to keep logs as long as possible so I can go back and look through them if I need to for some reason. As an update to this segment, I'd like to show you what the new RMS Express setup box looks like. Uh, you might notice here we've got the additional item of uh, keeping deleted messages. And then we also have a new contact information box. Uh, so if you fill out any of the items in this box, and when you click on update, it will update the website. So that's what the new interface looks like. So after you've made all these changes, you're basically going to come down and hit update. And when you update the, when you do that, your call sign will show up here at the top. The other thing we're looking interested in looking in under files is preferences. So let's click on preferences and the preferences windows come up. And this is about uh, messaging and reading messages. And you can read through this. Basically the first section is uh, how long it's going to take before it marks a message read when you look at it. Um, I have mine checked to automatically move uh, read messages to the red items folder. Uh, if you come over here and look on uh, the system folders there's an inbox which is where things will be. And when you click on the message and actually look at it in the read window after three seconds or when you click to the next message it will push that message into the red items box 
Uh, it's just a way of moving things around uh, because you've already looked at them once. Uh, later on, you can go back and delete them or move them to some other folder if you wish. Next thing we want to look at, uh, message acknowledgement options. Just leave all of these blank. You can read through and see what they are uh, about automatically uh, returning messages and stuff. But let's just leave all those blank. Uh, the next section is message sending options. There's two here. Um, I'd like for you to check both of them. First one's automatically add contact entries for each destination address. So words, every time you send out a one link email, it's going to add that address to your contacts list. The contacts list on the far left over here and every time you send one out it's going to add it to it. Uh, the next item is add forward slash forward slash WL2K to the subject of the message. This is your outgoing messages. Go ahead and click on that. That way you don't have to type this every time. It's going to automatically put it in front of it. Um, I like to see everything in miles and so I click on uh, the miles uh, dot. Uh, that way when I'm doing propagation it's going to give me miles to a station not kilometers. Uh, so when we're done with those options just hit update and you're done there. The other items in the files menu we're going to go through real quick just to give you an idea of what they are. Uh, this review message list before downloading, uh, this is just a quicker place to get to that. If you click on it once, you'll notice now it's highlighted. Uh, you'll notice later, and I'll show you an example of it, but when we review messages, when we have incoming messages, this lets us look at each message, uh, just the title and the size of it, to see if we want to accept it or not. Uh, again, if I click on it again, uh, it will uncheck it. Uh, GPS position reports, we'll look at that real quick. If you are out on the water, uh, sailors use this a lot. You can give up GPS position reports. If your system is capable of automatically doing it, we'll pull the lat long in, or you can type it in yourself. Uh, but this is primarily for uh, marine uh, users uh, when they're out on the ocean to give position reports. Let's close out of that and look at the next section, uh, Windlink Catalog Requests. This is handy if you need to get to information. There's lots of different categories of items in here. Uh, the one I want you to look at uh, specifically is the uh, WL2K RMS group. And these are all the different reports that are available. These are all the different actual lists of current packet and pack tour win more gateways that are out there. So if you wanted to get uh, a list sent to you uh, in a text form, this is a way to get it. You could choose a uh, pack tour. Uh, public uh, lists and just click on that and when you double click on that it pushes it over into the things that you actually want uh, to go get and then you just post the request and then it acts like an outgoing email and makes a request to WinLink and then the next time you uh, connect it will actually download that uh, report to you. Uh, so it's a good way to go out information. Uh, there's lots and lots of other stuff, weather related, uh, things that are on the categories list here. Uh, so you can look through that and uh, pull down some reports and get, get a lot of information that way. Uh, so we were done with that, so let's hit cancel. And we're going to come back out uh, to the GRIB file requests. Uh, again, this is for Mariners mostly, but if I wanted to uh, go and find a uh, the weather, winds and weather for a particular part of an area. I can highlight it here and request uh, that report and that will give me current winds uh, for that location. Uh, again, that's not something you're going to use, but that's what it's for. Come back to files and we've done preferences. Let's go to user up, uh, update user options. Um, you won't use this too much, but if you knew you weren't going to be on WinLink for a while, you could put in your normal AOL email address or any email address and WinLink would automatically forward your WinLink mail to that email address. It's kind of handy if you know you're not going to be uh, have access to uh, 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 WinLink for a while. You can uh, do automatic forwarding here. Uh, the next thing is to limit the size of messages uh, that are coming into me and this is in bytes. Uh, if you're doing a lot of radio work you can push this down to where uh, you know huge email files aren't going to be sent to you. And of course if you're out of the country you can put uh, out of country prefixes and suffixes in here and it will automatically put these before and after your existing call sign. Uh, so uh, that's some options that you can choose. Again just leave all of these blanks and leave it as defaults uh, on the byte size. Um, group addresses, that's the next thing. 
uh, group addresses uh, you can take uh, all of your contacts to make a group uh, so you can just send one uh, one name and it'll send it out to all the wing link users or whatever addresses you want uh, so you can select select it from the existing contacts or build the address you know I have uh, ET digital here this is East Tennessee digital and just a group that I've put together uh, uh, the folks that that are on uh, the net uh, that we uh, are part of so that's how a group address works and I'll show you where that would show up later. Uh, next thing we'll do is a hyb hybrid network parameters. Um, if the CMS servers ever went down, we could have our email wait at a message pickup station. Uh, these are stations that can hold and forward email without having to send them to the main CMS servers. And uh, that's pretty handy if the main servers go down. Uh, these are uh, the existing ones that are capable of doing it. Uh, VE1YZ in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia is one of my favorite stations. And, uh, and if I were doing it from my home location, uh, they, that would be the station I'd want to hold my email because I can contact them so readily. Uh, but in, in, a, in a grid down situation and where the CMS servers were not reachable, uh, you could still pass traffic uh, through a particular station and have your message held there for you. So that's what this is all about. We're not going to be using this, but just be aware of it. It's, it's a nice handy feature uh, if you got in a situation where you had to use it. So we'll cancel out of that and go to our next section here, uh, Backup and Restore Databases. Uh, the databases uh, your, that you have uh, that make up the information that's in your system is going to get uh, stored every day. I would increase it to as far as it would go. I put a thousand days in here, but uh, but uh, basically just stretch it out to where it holds uh, your databases for a long period of time and click. make sure it's clicked on automatically backup. I want it to automatically do it all the time. That way I can always default back if for some reason something gets corrupted. Uh, you just choose the one you want, hit restore. Uh, so that's uh, you can also do an immediate backup right now by clicking the backup databases now button. Uh, so that's how everything kind of gets backed up. Let's hit cancel out of that. Come down to files again, and we've made it through all the items in this list. If we wanted to exit out of RMS, we just hit exit and then we close the program.